my game mm -hmm. away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do it, fellas. Let's do it, fellas. Hey, I got some wise words for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. You gotta fight for your right to party. You ready to make history? Come on now. Yeah. You know, there's, there's these two words. And when I say them, people get goosebumps because they, they know. They know what happens next. So without further ado. Free smoke. <laughs> Look. Scared cause I'm drowning in silence with bad thoughts These days I don't have nothing to say, man, the bad talks I put in headphones on my driver Pull up to the spot and give a good dick and good diver. I can't lie, I'm uninspired No more pillow talking about nonsense I only stick around to put some band-aids on my conscience I don't know why I feel so bad, nigga That's what we do, no foundation We don't build no more, we just screw Half a bottle of Henny, girl, I'm going with the wind The same nigga say they happy for me Ain't want me to win, so I'm done on my friends Don't need help, popping Coronas And reminiscing, I just call up Big Bro J And say it's time for venting If I live forever, I hold this hate for some centuries You don't know how much I have you do with it meant to me, but motherfuck all that. I don't even know for up the time to make the call back. Stupid low though. If they don't get the picture now, man, I crop them out of the photo. I can't relate to my peers. Been doing this shit for years. I'm motivated by fears. I took the wheel and I steer. My sound not dictated by fuck boys in Atlanta. Stay gifted like this album was ghost written by Santa Boss forever. Like they decided to throw me under slammer. Every song's a hit like they pitching me underhand as I could drop a million songs, but they never gonna understand this. Soapbox service for niggas. Never giving chances Fight our whole lives to get these weak ass advances Work twice as hard for this shit that they getting handed And this ain't even nothing we chose, nigga, we branded Still can't tell why y'all of these niggas mad at me I'm trying to get a hundred so I can put my team on salary Give it all to the art, man, I turn my life to a gallery uh, Man, damn, with a fucked up masterpiece 1100 shots and I swear, man, I felt them all If we ain't even good on our blocks, man, who can we call? pre decline state of mind, we broke crabs in the barrel Got us fighting our folk, man, this shit just a life of peril When the winning not become the main thing I always say keep the main thing the main thing Where, you know, winning is the only thing that truly matters Week three recap It's gonna be two of these bitches <clears throat> I'm just letting you know off rip this one basically part one. What else would it be if it's going to be two of them? I'm feeling good. Yo, I had food. So I told y'all I had food poisoning last week. I did not realize the effects it was going to have on me until I basically slept through the entire weekend. That is neither here nor there. I am healthy now. I'm back on my feet and I'm feeling good. And I hope you guys are feeling good. I've been having a lot of people hit me up lately saying that they finna start watching the channel. They finna subscribe. They finna watch a show. I done had a lot of people tell me that lately. And I done had a lot of people just rant. Yo, I've been commenting on random videos. And I done had other people comment on my comments under other videos saying like they agree with the comment. But also, I watch your show and it's a great show. Keep it up. So I just want all y'all to know I appreciate you. I truly do. I'm not one of these uh, people who, who uh, don't pay no attention to these comments. I pay very close attention to these comments. I love them. I absolutely love I'm one of them people who not really affected too much by negativity at this point. Like you could say something ignorant to me and it's probably not going to really bother me. Uh, I get bothered when you start. Uh, stupidity is what bothers me. And liars. I don't like it when people be lying right uh, to me. Especially when we both know, bro, like. Bro, you are, but that's beside the point. I used to know this dude in college, bro. Lying don't really piss me off. It's a certain type of lying. But I used to know this dude in college. He would lie to me every day, and me and him was the best of friends. I knew he was lying to me every day, bro. Could care less. And it was some uh, egregious lies, like some wild lies. But because college is one of them things where you like to pass the time, I was all in for some of the lies he was telling me on a regular basis. I used to tell my brother when I got back to the dorm, like, yo, I just had a conversation with so and so, bro, and you won't even believe the lie he told me today. Like, me and my brother was both entertained by the lies that I was being told on a daily basis. So I don't even hate Buddy for that, bro. 
He wanted a few people who like, well, no, it's a lot of people who I know like this, but he wanted the people who, bro, he lied to me every day, but he never lied about important shit. He, like me, knew I'm bored. Shit, let me make up a story real quick. And I'm all for it. Bro, I'm all for it. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to just start making up random stories. And at the end of it, I'm going to be like, I'm glad we enjoyed that. But all that shit was a lie. I, everything I just said was a lie. But listen, I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you chose to be here with me today. And I appreciate you for it. I really do. Listen, we got to do a week three recap. The thing that's getting me right now is that this first recap is not going to be as deep into all the teams. And I do apologize for that. I know a lot of people who watch me or people who watch me watch me because I talk about every single team for the most part. I'm not a channel who just talk about one team, two teams. Now, I might talk about Baltimore more than other teams. Not really, though. I usually make specific videos to talk about Baltimore. And boy, am I going to talk about Baltimore. But Cowboy fans, if you are a Cowboy fan and you like, bro, I cannot go to another sports channel and see somebody talking crazy. Don't worry. I'm not going to massacre you here. L losing to the Cardinals is wild, but something else happened. So that don't really bother me. Maybe if you were the only team, because a lot of the underdogs won yesterday. The Colts beat the Ravens. The Cardinals beat the uh, beat the Cowboys. What was that other team that lost yesterday? It was another good team that lost yesterday. Damn, what was the name of that team? I can't even remember. Oh, uh, New Orleans lost. Now, New Orleans one don't really count, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm happy that the Packers won, even though I picked against the Packers. Um, but that's just off of the information I have been presented with with watching them. And they started the game slow and everything. They The Packers won that game because Derek Carr got hurt. I'm just being straight with you. The Packers do not win that game if they don't, uh, Derek Carr don't get hurt. I, I'm I, listen as somebody who clearly love and support the Packers. I have no problem saying we do not win that game if not for Derek Carr getting hurt. But shout out, I hope he'll uh, hope Derek Carr can heal up. Now, a lot of things happened yesterday, but something important happened. Something bigger than anything else that happened. I could care less that the Cowboys lost to the uh, Arizona Cardinals, bro. Every year, a great teams are gonna lose to a bad team at some point in time. The Ravens lost it. The Colts beat a good team every year. They beat the Chiefs last year. So, uh, stuff like that. Don't every year, you don't see a team drop 70 fucking points. All right. And it's just so, you know, it's this thing where sometimes life just puts you in a situation where opportunity meet whatever that quote is. Because I can't remember it. But whatever the quote is, we find ourselves in a situation. You see, I'm one of the few people who constantly go at Sean Payton. I had somebody, uh, I tweeted, no, I didn't tweet. I Under a YouTube video, I said, I'm glad that Ryan Clark, some, I said, I'm finally see, I'm glad somebody finally going at uh, Sean Payton. And this dude commented under and was like, everybody going to Sean Payton. What do you mean? Bro, you can just tell people who don't watch sports or who just watch games and don't pay attention to nothing else. Because some comments to me just make no sense, bro. What are you talking about, people go at Sean? But that's neither here nor there. Listen, it's very convenient that I've been... My feelings towards Sean Payton for the last couple of years, if you watch the show, I consistently say he is overrated. I'm not telling you who a bad, he is a bad head coach. I don't believe Sean Payton to be a bad head coach, but what I'm telling you is his best years is behind him. I'm not telling you that as definitively. I'm telling you that that's what's been transpiring. His best coaching years have not been recent. But I don't hear nobody call Sean Payton out. Sean Payton retired from being the Saints coach after Drew Brees retired a year after that. And I think I choose to believe he did that because he knew he didn't have a... a chance without a drew Brees, he go in the tv of course they gonna love a white dude who go in the tv bro oh saint you being racist bro just look at the history bro they love these white dudes who go into the uh tv space after they get done coaching as if they were the great every single coach when they get out of coaching is treated as if he was one of the greatest coaches look at jason garrett 
Have you heard anybody bring up any of his struggles as a head coach since he done been in the uh, TV? Herm Edwards. It's no different, bro. It, this is just what happens for coaches, but specifically because this is a white coach who won a Super Bowl, you know they're going to treat this man real good. You know he's going to be revered in the media. Even though his Super Bowl was almost two decades ago. Now, I see people hold Bill Belichick account. I see not even hold him. I see people go at Bill Belichick all the time now saying, oh, he going to start winning again. You can hold Belichick accountable, but I never see people hold Sean Payton accountable. I never see it. I never see it. And this is what's interesting to me. Sean Payton had, he was the head coach in New Orleans for Bounty Gate. He was the same head coach in New Orleans, because I told you about the Super Bowl. He's the same head coach in New Orleans who was projected to be a Super Bowl team or the team to get out of the NFC for like three years in a row. Lost in the first or second round every single year of that uh, run when they were supposed to be the best. I can argue that over the last couple years when the Saints were at their best towards the back end of Drew Brees' career, Sean Payton wasted. He didn't. What, what did he do as a coach that over? Because, see, y'all keep calling him a guru. And I keep saying, I'm looking at his players do far more than what the coaching is doing. The coaching got Drew Brees dinking and dunking. So we giving Sean Payton and Drew Brees all the credit. For what Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram, uh, what, what's my man's name? Uh, uh, God, I keep forgetting this man's name because he always hurt. That's why I always forget his name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Dude who always flexing when he celebrates. Michael Thomas. I know what all them dudes been doing. I know what the defensive side of the ball with Dennis Allen was doing and how all those big name dudes on that side of the ball do. But just like I was saying about Ron Rivera, and Sean Payton is a far better coach than Ron Rivera, so do not think I'm comparing him to Ron Rivera. However, Ron Rivera, my problem was he did not bring out anything more that his talent was putting on the field. They had to get better by themselves because the coaching was not going to make the game easier. All Sean Payton do is make his quarterbacks throw the ball down the field far less than they probably want to. He get them attacking defenses who decide to play the middle and deep because he going to keep dinking and dunking the part of the field that most defenders not playing until towards the end of the game, he come up, they come up and play it. And he survived off of the fact he had great defenses and Drew Brees with a lot of weapons because Drew Brees didn't look the same them back in his career when Buddy, uh, Buddy was hurt, did he? However, we have chosen, not we, the media has chosen to act like none of that shit has happened with Sean Payton. As if he done won five Super Bowl. They treat Sean Payton like he got Bill Belichick's resume. I don't never hear people going at Sean Payton. But you know who went at Sean Payton today? Shout out to Ryan Clark. Ryan Clark might not watch my videos. But it feel like he be watching my shows and wa uh, watching my tweets, bro. Because every time I say something, Ryan Clark finally come out and call people out on the thing that I've been pissed off about. Ryan Clark is right when he said, even though I, I've been saying this, Ryan Clark went at Sean Payton on get up and on first take. This man, Sean Payton, went into Denver this offseason. He called out ownership. He called out the previous head coach. He called out Russ. He called out the former players. He called out the locker room. He did everything under his power to make it about Sean Payton as if he had Bill Belichick's resume. Now, I know another coach that's got a Sean Payton-like resume who y'all treat like shit, who y'all always saying is overrated, who every time something go wrong, y'all trying to find a way to get him fired. His name would be Mike McCarthy. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I got to go back and do my history check. He won his Super Bowl just, what, two years before Sean Payton won his? Yet y'all treat him as if he's a man who hadn't won a Super Bowl in about two decades. But you talk about and treat Sean Payton like he a dude who win a Super Bowl every other year. Not a coach who done underachieved his last couple years. So he talked the way he talked and he come into this Denver uh, organization and they are 0-3. And, and I see people want to blame Russ. People want to blame everybody under the sun. People don't want to blame Sean Payton. This on Sean Payton. You don't get to talk the way you talk, bro, with your resume not even stacked to the gills 
That's the thing that get irritating to me, bro. I hate that sports don't become a statistical type of thing. We judge everybody off of statistics. That's why y'all was uh, dick sucking Drew Brees on his way out. When in actuality, if you watch the games, he dinking and dunking. That's why he got these perfect completion uh, percentages. And that's why he a lead the league in completion rating. Because he throwing four, three yards out. That's the guru of Sean Payton. But nobody called him out on that. Everybody just saw the results and said, and the stats, not the results, the stats. Because every time Sean Payton lost, it was always some big thing that y'all pointed out. Oh, the ref, oh, the other team, oh, this, oh, that. You never, y'all went at Drew Brees before y'all went at Sean Payton. Now, Drew Brees did say some things that warranted that vitriol. However, Drew Brees' downfall was televised before Sean Payton's. And he was the coach over there the entire time who I can make an uh, argument underachieved far more than drew Brees did but he never get called out for it so he get to march into denver say all the shit he said called out all these other bro i got irritated when baker midfield called out lamar i get irritated anytime a player call out another player of that position group because you know how hard it is to play in the nfl but if you play my position you definitely know how hard it is why should that not extend to a head coach calling out another head coach for no fucking reason? And I really don't like that he did it because what is Nathaniel Hackett supposed to say? And he done had a terrible season. He living off of the reputation of him being cool with Aaron Rodgers. You back him into a corner where he can't say nothing. It's bullying. But it's Sean Payton. So it was cool. It's the same way people think it's cool for fans to constantly go at athletes but then turn around and say, well, they make millions of dollars, so they should be able to take it. It's bullying. But we seem to not want to call it out when we like people or when we don't like somebody. So because you don't like Russell Wilson, it's cool for Sean Payton to be uh, doing all the things he's doing. You know what really pissed me off during the offseason? How everybody was going at Russ for having an office and his own training staff, right? And then when Sean Payton came in, he got rid of all that. And then everybody was happy about that. What superstar? would not want those type of privileges. Would you be mad if LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant, rest his soul, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady had them? You don't think those players got the same type of special treatment? Because we want our greatest stars to be great when it mattered. So why would Russ, who has been great all the way up to that point in his career, not be able to have the things that he needs? And I, I tell you all the time, I think it's very funny how you take one season of a player and you turn that into their entire career and everything in the past is done. It's kind of like how every time Lamar Jackson might have an off game, Shannon Sharp will hop on TV and tell you that Lamar Jackson can't throw the ball. Every single time Lamar struggle, Shannon Sharp hop on TV and tell you Lamar can't throw the ball. But when Joe Burrow threw for 80 some yards in the first game, struggled in Baltimore, did you see somebody get on TV and tell you he can't throw the ball? So it's real funny how even an African-American man will judge an African-American quarterback knowing how hard it is when he is being judged by a white analyst. But Shannon done proved to me he don't watch the fucking games anyways because this goofball got on Twitter talking about some, I see the same, no, he was on TV talking about some, he, did he see the same offense he saw last year, this year? Then you're clearly not watching the games, bro. You're clearly not watching the games. And to continue to say Lamar cannot throw the ball is just so infuriating when I haven't missed a single Lamar Jackson game in my of, of his career. To continue to say this man can't throw the ball and continuously putting that message out there, I don't know how Lamar haven't sued for defamation of character. I'm just being 100% honest with you, bro, because this is insane at this point. It's insane. Shannon been doing this since he had that after the game show with Deion Sanders and uh, I think it was LaDamian Thomason. That's how long this has been going on. Some of y'all don't even know about that show they used to do after the games on Sundays. I'm in this. I watch all of this sports shit, bro. I don't just watch the game and go to bed. But back to Sean Payton, because that's why this is a part two. That's why it's going to be two parts, because it's no shot. A whole bunch. Bro, I could be talking about Justin Fields and get caught into that and not give Sean Payton uh, talk about him the way I should. I could get caught up in talking about my Baltimore Ravens and how we blew the end of that game and not talk about Sean Payton. That's not going to happen. Because you don't get to do what Sean Payton went into that organization doing and have this be the result right now. You can't blame Russ. And I know some people would want to blame the defense, right? You, you, you want to blame the defense? Defense was bad. 
all season so far. But you keep blaming Russ. And you ain't blame Sean Payton yet. Sean Payton could have hired Rex Ryan in the offseason. Rex Ryan is a proven defensive guy. At no point in time in Rex Ryan's career has he not had a great defense. You can say whatever you want to about Rex Ryan as a head coach. What you can't say is that he didn't ever been a bad defensive coordinator or a bad defensive guy. He hired Vance Josephs. Now, whose fault is that? Is that Vance Josephs' fault? I'm not telling you that Vance Joseph don't get paid, so he should be held to a certain standard. But who hired him? It's the same way y'all go at Matt Canada. And I say every year, Matt Canada can't fire himself. And if he could, he wouldn't. Now, obviously, you'll have those people who just get so tired of the constant bullying that they'll just step down. But in normal situations, Mike Tomlin is the one who get to decide that. And he keep Matt Canada. So I don't understand why people keep going at Matt Canada. That's showing you they like Mike Tomlin. So we're not going to go at the dude who could hire or fire him or make the change. We're going to go at the guy who shown us what he is, but he can't fire himself. So we just going to keep bullying him. Also, I think it's real funny when y'all decide not to talk about talent on the field. So for Lamar Jackson, it was never Greg Roman. It was never nobody. Y'all give Greg Roman. I I continue to say I've never seen a quarterback in my life who won a unanimous MVP or MVP. And the credit was given to the uh, offensive coordinator. Andy Reid, one of the greatest minds we have ever seen. I do not. They rarely they they always talk about him. They never strip away Pat Mahomes uh, credit and give it to. They don't give him 25 percent of the credit they give Pat Mahomes. They separate the credit. They give Andy Reid his credit, but they have never at any point in time said, well, Pat Mahomes is only successful because he got Andy Reid. But for some reason, it's this addiction to saying Lamar is only good because of this, because of that. Bro, just watch the games, bro. Just watch the games. Sean Payton, though, I'm not done with you. Bring that ass here, boy. Pause. Pause. Listen. My other problem when it comes to this Broncos team. Why is the only person on this team that gets a check? Russell Wilson. Y'all can't be this simple. Bro, y'all cannot continue to say it's everything is on Russ because that's the only person y'all know who to blame. I told you before, and I saw Shannon say, you know, it's on Russ because you don't you can score more than 20 points. Bro, have you seen what he going out there working with? You said that they can score 72. They can also score 70. I beg to differ. Denver ain't putting up no 70 fucking points. They don't got the team Miami got. And I told y'all about Miami, bro. Any team that ain't figured it out on offense yet is going to get their asses whooped by Miami. Because Miami done figured it out on offense. They Last year they started hot. They starting hot this year. Miami, clear. this is clearly a great coach team. As far as offense, that is undeniable. Mike Daniels, what he is teaching is clearly resonating because Miami, the ability that these dudes have to score and score quick and score early. It's no it's no log or no breakout injuries. Fuck his team up. That's it. You can't say the playbook too complicated. You can't say the players can't do what he asks them to do. This is unreal. Great hire by Miami because Mike McDaniels is a uh, honey. I'm starting to feel about him what I feel about Matt LaFleur. Because you can, t- in my opinion, if you really watching these games, you can see the coach influence over a game on over a team. And you can see how much that's truly helping a team. And I would argue it's two teams right now. If you took their head coaches away, would not be good teams. And that's the Packers. And that's as great as the defense they have. If you take Matt LaFleur off of that team, that is just not the same team. And I'm talking about even with Aaron Rodgers. And the other one is Miami. If you take, uh, and that's Miami is so very clear. They didn't even know if Tua was going to be the guy before this. You fast forward this into this man only problem being that he couldn't stay healthy. And that's the only thing that's done stop them. They, them boys just put up 70. It was eight minutes left. They could have kept scoring. They show Sean Payton mercy. Something that I would not have been so keen on. 
Sean Payton, you lucky, bro, because I would have ran that motherfucker up, boy. I'm trying to put a hundred on your dome. It's a burger shop, bro. We serving burgers with a hundred patties on them. And I ain't even told you the worst part yet. I'm talking about Miami score 70. Bro, Denver scored 20, son. Them boy, I almost said the N-word. Them boys just got beat by 50 fucking points, bro. Bro, I don't even remember the last time I beat somebody like that when I was playing, man. I'm a damn great Madden player. Like, I'm not, this is not no, uh, I know some people hear people say they're good at Madden, you know, people's egos. And st- no, listen, I'm trying to tell you right now. I am a otherworldly Madden player. I couldn't tell you the last time. Well, aside from some of my homeboys who just is garbage. I don't remember the last time I played against a, uh, like a top tier type of Madden player who actually is great at the game and understand like how, and I'm not talking about somebody who just relying on exploits. I'm talking about somebody who is legitimately great at the game and understand what the fuck they're doing and how to get points and how to beat every type of D. I could not tell you the last time I put up even 50 points against somebody like that. The Broncos just gave up 70 and lost by 50. The giving up 70 is crazy. I ain't going to lie. But you lost by 50. Bro, do you know how crazy that is? 50. Bro, what do you, well, uh, bro, if you, y'all always talking about players losing respect for us. I be saying, I saw them talking about the, the players in the rock locker room don't trust Russ. Well, why in God's name would they trust Sean Payton after these motherfuckers just got, I was about to say the N-word again. Why in God's name would they trust Sean Payton now? Because Nathaniel Hackett didn't give up 70 points in none of his games last year. But here we are. Oh, I know why. I, I know why they're not going to lose respect for him. Oh, because he was good with the Saints. Because Drew Brees and him won a Super Bowl about two decades ago. That's why they're not going to lose respect for the coach to just coach the 70 point, uh, a 50 ad point ass whooping where we gave up 70. That's 30 away from a hundo. Y'all not hearing me. The record for the most points scored is 72. They could have kicked this field goal to get 73, but they chose to give him mercy. But y'all not hearing me. They had 70 with eight minutes left. Y'all not hearing me. They were scoring the ball on like two plays. Y'all not hearing me. The backup came in and threw two passes that led to a touchdown for Robbie Anderson. Y'all, y'all not hearing me. Listen, in the Chiefs game, the Chiefs went up 40-1-0. Uh, they put in Blaine Gabbard in the third quarter, and this jackass threw, threw two interceptions and looked terrible. You don't, y'all not hearing me. This ain't just, oh, they put a backup. Bro, the Broncos are legit terrible, and Sean Payton should be held accountable for that. Just like y'all went at Nathaniel Hackett last year. Just like y'all, oh, y'all went at uh Buddy who was over there with um the Jags. Go at Sean. Oh, well, he got a resume, Saint. When was the last time? Okay, so we're not going to hold the fact that he basically quit on the Saints. Y'all will hold that against anybody else, but y'all not going to hold it against Sean Payne. Okay, cool. Okay, so what did he do before that? Oh, well, he made the playoffs like, okay, but he making the playoffs and losing, and y'all hold that against Lamar Jackson, and he get to the playoffs and lose. But we're not going to hold that against Sean Payne. Okay, okay. Okay, so what he do before that? Well, he won a Super Bowl. Okay, but that was like two decades ago. It don't matter, Saint. It's hard to win one of those. Okay, well, we can't win then. Sean Payton can't be talked about then. He can do no wrong then. Because this is crazy. I mean, it, I said this last year, bro. It was a game last year where the Ravens played against the Bengals. Lamar Jackson. Now, the Ravens secondary and defense had a lot of dudes missing. Okay, follow me. Lamar Jackson was having a great game. I, I, I challenge you to go back and watch that game. Lamar Jackson was balling. So was Joe Burrow. Here the difference. Joe Burrow really wasn't balling in the sense that he was having to do too much. He was just throwing simple passes, and his receiver was getting a whole bunch of run after the catch, all right? In the second half of this game, Lamar Jackson started off with a great drive on some great throws to score. From that moment on, the defense immediately came out and let the uh, Joe Burrow and them boys score like on a, in like less than a minute, on like a two-yard or five-yard pass that went for like 70 yards by Jamar Chase. From that point on, Lamar Jackson in the Ravens offense that had already had, I think, what, around 30 at that point. They just couldn't continue to keep up. They had realistically in football, you're not supposed to be able to score on every fucking drive. However, the Ravens defense was so bad that day, they could not keep up with how much they could score against their the opposing team's defense and how much this offense could score against their this sorry ass defense. However, the media would have had you believe 
Well, Lamar and the Ravens can score too. They should be able to score points also. But what I'm telling you is when your defense is so bad, when your coach can't make no adjustments because he just get paid to stand over there and look nice and wear their team a uh, sponsor uniform, then it's nothing the opposing offense can do about a team that just went out there and hung 70 on your head. Now, like I just said, last year, the Ravens damn near could have probably gave up 70. And don't worry, bro. And then part two tonight, I am definitely going to be talking about how the Chicago Bears, all that dick sucking y'all was doing for Justin Fields because y'all don't watch the games. Y'all was blaming the coaches. Oh, Justin Fields, right. They don't let him run enough. Let me ask you something. When he was doing all that running last year and not improving on the passing, did he not get hurt early? Did he not start talking about his fatigued legs and whatnot? Uh, it's interesting. You motherfuckers who don't watch the game just like arguing. Y'all just like being right or just like arguing with people. Because there's no way y'all watching these. Like I said about Shannon. He ain't watching full Raven games. I could care less that he won a Super Bowl with them boys. Could care less. That man, and if you really think that these dudes sitting down watching full games after they they work the way they do throughout the week, you think that they not sitting down. You if you really think they sitting down watching full games, you're stupid. One of the greatest things Pat McAfee ever said was that he be taking naps. He can't uh, stay up throughout a whole game. That's exactly how I feel about these analysts, bro. Keep letting them lie to y'all. Keep letting them watch uh, full clips on YouTube and sitting down telling you that they watch the full game. Just listen to what they're saying. It's no way Shannon Sharp is watching Raven games this year if he think they look just like they did last year. Hell, in the beginning of the game, they looked way better than uh, they done ever looked under Greg Roman. But sure. And let's also continue to get Greg Roman credit for everything that Lamar Jackson was doing for the Ravens, bro. It, can t it makes no sense. I don't know what Greg Roman done done to these boys to get this type of clout out of them, but it's astounding. But before I end the episode, I have to praise the Dolphins again. I told y'all a couple, uh, well, I told you at the beginning of my time doing these uh, shows, it's two a time, baby. Back when Ryan Fitzpatrick was crying and shit that he didn't get the job, that a Tua took his job. I told you, it's two a time. It's two a time. I got nothing but faith in my guy, too. Nothing but faith. Now, am I biased? Absolutely. I've been an Alabama fan for a long time, even though I don't rock with him this year because I am fully on that Colorado bandwagon. Don't worry. I got a Colorado video coming out soon. But my guy, too, is making me so proud right now. And obviously, I told you what was going to happen when he got Tyreek. See, this is what I'm saying. I appreciate everybody for listening uh, to the show and checking me out all the time. And I promise you, eventually, it's going to be a video type thing where I'm on camera and all that. But listen, just rock with me and understand and, and get the message more than you want to see my face. Get the and it's not. I promise you, I'm not scared to show my face or nothing like that. You can go to any of my socials and see me. But just uh, yeah, I really need y'all to get these messages, bro, because I'm not being arrogant right now. But for some, anybody who watched me for as long as they don't watch me, if you don't watch a ton of my videos, most of the shit I'm saying is right. And it keep being proven right. And it's not that I'm a know it all. I just watch the games, bro. I just, it's, that's as simple as that. I watch the games. So every time an analyst finally come up with the truth, I'm like, I knew the truth months ago because I watched the games. You just now deciding to watch the games or you just so happen to see them play on prime time. I don't have to watch, wait and do that because I watch the games. Full fucking games. Listen to me. Okay. These analysts continue to tell you how great Justin Herbert is. I don't see Justin Herbert going out there doing what Tua is doing. But y'all constantly keep going at Justin. I mean, Tua. It's no expectations for Justin Herbert who just got paid. But y'all keep going at Tua. The media kept telling y'all that Tyree Kill is a slot receiver. I've been telling y'all since I got on this channel that Tyreek is the best receiver in football. I keep telling you that. And he keep proving me right on a weekly basis. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anything I could leave you with, there's two messages. Watch the games and go out there and love somebody. I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. Tell somebody you fuck with him. Tell somebody you love him. You can be anything in the world. Choose to be kind to somebody today. 
for absolutely no fucking reason whatsoever. Go make somebody's day. I love you and I appreciate you. Like, subscribe, share. Sign out. I got the moves like hot sauce. Lil' mama taking the top off. I'm laying down getting topped off. After this, she know she getting knocked off. I know she loving the money, so I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She say she horny when she take a shot, so I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in her tummy. Scoop her up like I'm raking her something. You would think shawty red track, the way that she running and running. You getting dumber and dumber. You out here chasing the bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> Tight.